In section 14.3, we are looking at double integrals in polar coordinates. So to better help prepare us for this section, I want to review some of the important conversion formulas, as well as some of the important trig identities that are going to be prevalent in this section and for the rest of the semester. So starting with our conversion formulas here, we already know how to do this. We already know that our polar coordinate plane exists on our Cartesian coordinate plane. So for some arbitrary ordered pair x, y, we know that this is equivalent to the ordered pair r theta. And so using this point, if we drop this point down to the x-axis, we create that right angle and a right triangle. So we know that this is our radius length, this is our height, our y, and this is x. So for thinking about our theta of concern here, using a little right triangle trig, we know that y is your opposite side, that x is equal to the adjacent side, and then our radius is, of course, the hypotenuse. So we have the following formulas. We can relate the side lengths of this triangle using Pythagorean's theorem. x squared plus y squared equals our radius squared. Using right triangle trig, we recall that sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse side. And so we can get our conversion formula here for y by multiplying both sides of the ex expression by the radius. Similarly, using right triangle trig, we know that cosine of theta is the adjacent by the hypotenuse, and we can solve for x here again by multiplying both sides of the equation by the radius. So these three formulas, Pythagorean's theorem, our right triangle trig for x and y, are all going to be very important as we proceed. And just as a friendly reminder here, I want to give you some of the important trick identities, which I know you know, but just in case. Our first one, our favorite sine squared plus uh, sine squared of theta plus cosine of theta squared is equal to 1. We also know that secant of theta squared is equal to 1 plus tangent of theta squared. And last but not least, we have cosecant of theta squared is equal to 1 plus cotangent of theta squared. Now, in addition to our good old friends, these Pythagorean identities, we want to keep in mind the following half angle and double angle formulas. And for these formulas, I'm going to let k be some scalar or some constant. So then we have our half angle formulas. We know that sine of k times theta squared is equal to 1 minus cosine of 2k theta, all divided by 2. We also have cosine of k times theta squared is equal to 1 plus cosine of 2 times k, or 2 k theta all by 2. So those are half angle formulas. And then in addition to these two formulas, we also want to keep in mind the double angle formula sine of sine of 2 k theta is equal to 2 times sine of k theta. A little more room multiplied by cosine of k theta. So while this is not an exhausted list of our trig identities, these six trig identities in particular are going to be important and will help us save time avoiding integration techniques when we can just use these trig identities. So we're now ready. Let's take a look at the definition for a polar coordinate over a general region. Jumping right into the definition, we want to let f be continuous on the region R in the xy plane, such that this region R is defined as the set of all ordered pairs R theta, where our radius 
is greater than or equal to 0, which is greater than or equal to the function g of theta, and it's less than or equal to the function f of theta, and theta is greater than or equal to alpha, less than or equal to beta. And this is such that alpha and beta are real numbers. And we also want to note that our theta here has to vary between 0 and 2 pi. So with this, with this general polar region, we can then define the double integral over a general region as follows. So let's keep in mind from the previous sections of double integrals in rectangular regions and general regions, we have that the volume is defined as the double integral over r of the function f of x, y, dA. And converting this now to polar coordinates, we can say that this is the double integral, and we'll plug in our bounds here. So from alpha to beta, the integral from g of theta to f of theta. And now using those conversion formulas, we can replace x here with r cos of theta and our y with r sine of theta. And now the differential is the important part here. The differential in polar coordinates is r dr d theta. So I want you to exercise some caution here. We want to make note of our differential. So the differential in Cartesian coordinates is simply dx dy, but this is not equal to dr d theta, as we just saw up above. And so just be mindful of that. We know that dx dy is equivalent to r dr d theta. And we can verify this using Riemann's limiting process or a little differential arithmetic. So I want you to note that I have put two separate derivations for this differential in the lecture PDFs. So you want to take, you want to be sure to take a peek at how we convert our differentials to polar coordinates.